Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to talk about something that's going to piss off some people. If you're someone that can handle a contrary opinion and you want to express that you disagree with me, that's fine. If you're someone that can't handle a contrary opinion and you're going to freak the fuck out, then maybe you're in the wrong place. But today I want to talk about something that is uh, very much on my mind right now, and it's how Trump supporters are damaging and hampering our fight for our Second Amendment rights in this country. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm engaging in a little bit of hyperbole here when I say Trump supporters. I, of course, don't mean all Trump supporters. Most Trump supporters liked him because of his policies. They may have liked his personality, they liked how gruff he was, or how he was pretty straightforward with what he thought. So there's a lot of reasons people like Trump. I'm not going to begrudge them any of those things. I liked a lot of his policies. So if you like Trump, that's fine. I'm not denigrating you. I'm talking about the small number of extremists that have embedded themselves in the pro-Trump movement. The people who were more than willing to support Trump, a politician, over their constitution. And you might say, well, Trump's not a politician. Well, he may not have started out as one, but he became one very quickly especially towards the end. So I'm talking about the extremists, the people that raided the Capitol, and not even all of them, because I think a lot of people were duped. I think a lot of people actually believed their president and thought things were actually going wrong, you know, and uh, did it for right reasons, may have done the wrong thing, but did it for the right reasons. I've been over that a thousand times already. But they really are, these extremists, the ones that did raid the Capitol and did do it for the wrong reasons, they are damaging our fight for the Second Amendment in this country because they have given the left a completely new narrative that they're using now. And they're using it quite uh, effectively. They used it a lot during the hearings the other day on the bills here in Washington. They said, oh, imagine if those people that stormed the Capitol had had assault rifles and high-capacity magazines. Oh, it would have been a tragedy. You know, oh, there would have been politicians killed and hung and blah, blah, blah. And the government would have been overthrown and America would have crumbled. Um, I don't think that would happen just from taking one building. But that's their story now. So now they have this new tagline of we have to ban assault weapons and we have to ban uh, high-capacity magazines. You know what they call high-capacity magazines for the sake of our democracy. We have to protect our government. We have to protect our democracy from these crazy zealots with guns who want to raid capitals and tear up property and hang people. And that's very effective with most people in America. It's a very effective argument because a lot of them saw what happened on the 6th. And I think you can tell public opinion is not on the side. Did not agree with it. They thought it was horrific. This was a bunch of people trying to overthrow an election that they considered, uh, they considered, the people trying to overthrow it considered it illegitimate, but most everybody else had no feelings of that. People who didn't swallow Donald Trump's bullshit that actually paid attention to the lawsuits and actually paid attention to when they said things like, we never got an audit. They actually got three audits. They just didn't get all the information turned over to them like they wanted. What they wanted was all the ballots handed to them. Well, there's some uh, privacy concerns involved in something like that. When someone who is currently the president of the United States wants a list of everybody that voted against him, they don't get that. And that's what they didn't get. So they lied and said we didn't get audits. Some people fell for that. Uh, and they did maybe the wrong thing, maybe for the right reasons, but probably the wrong thing. And like I said, that is fueling the left right now. That is the biggest dose of gasoline they've had on their fire in a long time because they have been struggling on a federal level. They have been struggling to get people more interested in why we should have less you know, freedom with guns. Uh, they've only been able to be successful on state levels when they lie to people about what their bills are about. So they loved this. This is why I said when I said this that not only did people on the right help instigate this, but people on the left helped it happen because they wanted it to happen because they knew a bunch of extremists had gotten into a position where they were influencing a lot of people and you know, they were going to do something rash and then they were going to be able to use it against those of us that are not extremists, that are either just conservative or maybe somewhere in the middle that don't agree with the leftists. 
And they were, and it worked out perfectly for them because now they have this battle cry of, we have to ban assault rifles and high capacity magazines to protect our democracy. And they can show all that footage from the sixth and show people, this is what's going to happen in your state if you don't get rid of these assault rifles. Imagine if these people had assault rifles. That's a very effective thing for them now. And we handed it to them on a plate because so many people in positions of authority or positions of influence in our community didn't speak up and say, hey, all this is bullshit. All this fighting you know, against BLM. We, we hate BLM. Fuck them all. They should all go to jail. Whatever. Doing all that shit. Who decided we need to do that to make us look bad? Uh, who decided we should be pro-Boogaloo boy in the Second Amendment? I would be pro-Constitution. And if they try to overthrow my Constitution, put a bullet in their head. If they're right and our Constitution has already been overturned, well, then they're freedom fighters. If they just don't like the way things are going for one reason or another and they want to change it to go their way, that's not a freedom fighter. Put a fucking bullet in their head as far as I'm concerned because those are traitors. I don't have to like what happens in my country as long as it happens in a democratic way and in a fair way. Uh, I can always live to fight again if we lose a presidency or a Senate seat, there's another, another vote two years from now or four years from now. And I don't think the president we have now will actually live to see the next one. <laughs> Not because I think anyone's going to harm him, just he could drop over dead at any minute. He's old. Uh, I'm tired of these old people running the country. That's another pet peeve of mine. But right now, what I want to make a point of is so many people out there with influence. Stop worrying about how big your check's going to be this week. Start worrying about, are these people that I'm riling up, are these people that I'm supporting, are these people that I'm allowing to go crazy in my comment section because I don't want to appear like I'm actually contradicting anyone and lose a dollar, maybe you should step up, have a little bit of responsibility. Let people know the truth. Let people know what's really going on. Don't exaggerate every threat. Don't pick fake fights with the ATF just so you can say you won. Don't do that shit because it leads to things like what happened on the 6th and it makes us look bad. It makes us look like racist. It makes us look like insurrectionist. All this shit that's been pumped out of the gun channels recently and the gun groups makes us look bad. And it's coming to roost for us now because right now this argument they have now, if we have to save our democracy from these far right gun people, it's getting traction. And we want to not let it get traction. We don't want to be the example that they use to say these types of things. So everyone out there, I ask you, on an individual basis, be a little more responsible. Think things through. Resource, uh, uh, use your resources you have at your uh, disposal with your computer. Research things. Find out if things are as bad as you've been told they are before you go off the deep end. And remember, most of these people you're listening to are used car salesmen. Do you believe anything a used car salesman says? No, you wouldn't. So don't believe them unless you can verify it. And don't get angry. Like I said, when people are angry and afraid, they are the puppet of both sides. The sides that want to milk them for their money because they're angry and afraid and they want to tell them to buy their products and donate money to their channels. And the people on the other side who know exactly how a cornered animal acts. And all they got to do is give them, all they got to do is poke a finger at them so that they'll start biting and snarling. And then they can be like, look, see, you do nothing. They bite and they snarl. They need to be put down. So that's all I'm asking people. Be a little more uh, conservative in your reactions to things. And if you're a big channel, if you're a gun organization, start taking some responsibility for the bullshit you put forward. The extremist stuff you put forward. The garbage stuff that most of us in the gun community don't agree with. The online community is not most of us in the gun community. It's full of a bunch of angry, frightened, impotent people who feel like they have no say in anything and no power to do anything other than maybe put a slug in a shotgun and go after a politician. Stop feeding those people. How about we deal with the issues that make them feel like that instead of just trying to rile them up and make them be a bad example. So in the end, like I said, on an individual basis, start being a little more conservative about how we react to things and decide, do I really have a reason to be that anti-BLM or do I just be like, I don't support them and don't give a fuck about them. Do stuff like that. And if you're someone in a position of authority or influence, stop worrying so much about your pocketbook. 
start taking some responsibility and do what's right. All right, before I go any further today, I wanna make a personal statement here on the channel, a very strong personal statement. I am not someone who believes in cancel culture, but I am going to make an exception right now. It seems the state of Oklahoma has decided it's a good idea to introduce a bill allowing people to hunt Bigfoot. And you know, I'm very forgiving on people who have different ideas. I understand people have different perspectives, different beliefs, different priorities. But when it comes to something as important as Bigfoot rights, I'm not going to flex at all. I have no forgiveness for this. As far as I'm concerned, the whole entire state of Oklahoma can kiss my ass. You're a bunch of savages. As far as I'm concerned, Puerto Rico, get your shit ready. Because there'll be a star open on the flag. Because if I have my way, Oklahoma is gone. Done. I don't care if they split it up between whatever other states are near Oklahoma. Uh, or whatever. But Oklahoma, if you pass this bill, as far as I'm concerned, you're out of the union. At least you are to me. You're dead to me. So... You might want to consider that before you pass this ridiculous, heinous bill allowing people to go out there and hunt Bigfoots. Because like I said, if you do this, I don't believe in cancel culture usually, but in this case, I'll make an exception. All right, now that that's off my chest, we can move on to my favorite part of the show, gun talk. And today I want to answer a question I got from a viewer about a gun I showed recently that I just got new, finally got a new gun for in first time in a long time. And they wanted to know, are 1911s or 2011s actually safe to carry, cocked and locked? And I wanted to take a few moments today to answer that question for them. Okay, I think most of us are aware that the main reason people are afraid to carry a 1911 cocked and locked is because of those extremely light triggers. 1911s and even 2011s are known for their really light triggers. This one here has one that weighs in at under two pounds. So this trigger is not gonna be hard to make go off. If I brush this trigger with anything, it's going to go off. It don't take a lot of effort. A piece of fabric, anything's going to make that go off. So it does have a light trigger, and that is something you have to be concerned about, but not if you know how to use the gun properly. Because if you do carry it cocked and locked, meaning the safety's on, that's one of the safest ways you can carry a gun. This gun will not fire. You can't really push this gun hard enough on the trigger to actually make it go off. Even if you're shoving it into a holster, like this one I just got from Renaissance Firearms, they saw that I had gotten this gun, they sent me one of these holsters, and it's a nice holster. But even if you're putting it in the holster here and something gets in the trigger, it's not gonna go off. You can't make this gun go off while the safety's on. The safety is the key. Now, a lot of people though will worry like, well, what if I have it in my holster and it has that really light safety and I accidentally brush off the safety? Then it's bouncing around, I'm running, blah, 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 it might go off. Well, for one, your holster should prevent that from happening. If your holster allows that to happen, probably not the best holster. But here's another thing for you. Even if that safety came off and this is down in the gun, well, it's not gonna fire. No matter how hard I squeeze that, it's not gonna go off. Here's with the safety off, shoving the gun back in the holster, still not gonna go off. That'll illustrate you to you there that that trigger's not going to fire the gun. And that's because the grip safety's not compressed. Even with the safety off, if you don't have your hand on the grip compressing the safety, it's not going to fire. It takes the combination of the safety being off and the grip safety being pushed before the gun will fire. So that's a very safe design. If this were a gun like a Glock or an M&P or any of the other guns that have the safety on the trigger and something like that happened, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a negligent discharge and hopefully the only thing you do is give yourself a nice streak down the side of your thigh, but things could be a lot worse depending on where you carry your holster. The only time you're ever gonna have any real risk with this gun is while you're holstering, just like most guns. But if that safety is on, it don't matter what you do, it's not gonna fire as long as you have that safety on there. And when you're drawing, even if you take the safety off as you draw, as long as you keep your finger off that trigger, it's not gonna go off. That's the same with pretty much every other gun. You can shoot yourself in the leg on your draw with any gun, even a revolver because you put your finger in the wrong place while you were drawing your gun. So there's no real added risk there either. 
So as you can see, when you carry a 1911 or a 2011 cocked and locked, you're carrying it the way it's meant to be carried. And in very many ways, it's not only safe, it's a lot safer than a lot of other guns. So the answer to that question of is it safe to carry cocked and locked is a definite yes. So as you can see, 1911s, 2011s, when carried cocked and locked, the way they're designed to be carried, they're not only safe, they're probably, as far as semi-automatics go, one of the safest platforms you can possibly carry. All right, we want to end the show today as usual with our viewer EDC. Our concealed carrier of the day is Clinton B. But as you can see, Clinton's not exactly concealed carrying. He's uh, open carrying in a very dramatic fashion. His primary sidearm here, which is what I'm concerned about, appears to be an FN 45 tactical, and this one is suppressed. I'm surprised he's not carrying this inside waistband so people can say, is that a suppressor in your pants or are you just a freak of nature? But this is what he's carrying along with uh, some other gear here, as you can see, rifle striped to his chest, looks like night vision gear on his head. He looks like he's uh, ready for business. Now, I don't know exactly everything he's carrying here because he put nothing in the email, just the pictures in his name. I guess that's because he had a hard time figuring out how to uh, paste those little cutout letters into an email, uh, but didn't tell me much. So just happened to uh, go by the pictures here. Now, when I do look at this picture here, the first thing I think is he's having a little fun with us. I mean, those pants and that shirt, they're a little clean and, uh, you know, not a wrinkle on them. So I'm pretty sure he's just having a go at us here. You know, no problem with that whatsoever. If he's not, the only thing I can think is, uh, I hope his wife is not crazy enough to let him actually have live ammo. Uh, but then as I look at the picture, I'm like, what am I thinking? Uh, unless a small immigrant woman uh, chained to a radiator counts as an actual wife, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a wife. But still, I wanted to show the pictures today because, hey, an FNX 45 Tactical, how often do you see someone carrying that? Especially suppressed. A lot of people don't even know they make holsters for suppressed guns. There's one right there. So that's our concealed carrier of the day, uh, Clinton B with his uh, rather unusual setup. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you come back tomorrow. Uh, till then, I just want to remind everyone that this channel is 100% viewer-funded. I do not take advertising dollars. I do not take sponsors. I do not let anyone pay me to tell you what they think I should tell you. I answer only to my viewers. If you want to become a sponsor of the channel, I suggest you first check out tympistolproject.com. Check out what I do with the money that I do get from sponsors. And if you like what we do, if you like the TYM trip, P product, uh, project, the Pets and Vets project, and you want to become a supporter, go over to patreon.com forward slash the Yankee Marshall, sign up to be a posse member. And with that said, I'll sign off as I usually do by saying, as far as the state of the world today is concerned, it is what it is. But in the future, if we keep level heads about us, we fight smart and hard, we actually put the effort into fighting for our rights in this country and not allowing anyone to take them from us, and we do it in the right way. What things will be in the future is better. <laughs>